You're live. Lord, we thank you for this day and it's this opportunity, Lord. Just do this meeting in a special way, Lord. Just bless these people that um, dedicate their time to this city. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, Holly Coffer, you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Walker, you have the uh, roll call, please. Steve Arnold. Here. Mike Scipio. Here. Doug Fleshman. Here. Greg Hudson. Here. Greg Wolf. Bonnie Thompson. Present. Jim Hughes. Here. Linda Boggs. I'm here. A quorum being present, I declare the meeting of the Delmar City Council of October 5th, 2020, in order. Uh, the first item on the agenda <laughs> is approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we accept minutes of the last council meeting, September 21st, as written. There's been a motion by Councilman Fletchman to approve the minutes of the September 21st, 2020 Council meeting as submitted, seconded by Councilman Hudson. Any comments, clarifications, questions? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed, no. Abstentions, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next, I would have uh, Councilman Arnott read a mayoral <laughs> proclamation. So, mayoral proclamation in harmony with Christian Heritage Week in West Virginia, November the 22nd through 28th, 2020, as proclaimed by Governor Jim Justice. Whereas Thanksgiving week marks the 29th consecutive Christian Heritage Week in West Virginia, thus continuing the tradition of annual proclamations beginning with Governor Gaston Caperton in 1992 through 96, and continuing by Governor Cecil Underwood from 1997 through 2000, Governor Bob Wise from 2001 through 2004, Governor Joe Manchin from 2005 through 2010, Governor Earl Ray Thomas from 2011 through 2016, and Governor Jim Justice from 2017 through 2020. And whereas 220 mayors from 135 cities, towns, and villages throughout the state of West Virginia have proclaimed Christian Heritage Week since 2001 and Whereas local churches have encouraged to participate with relevant Sunday school lessons, sermons, patriotic song services, youth programs, and prayer meetings. Now, therefore, let it be known that November the 22nd through the 28th, 2020, Thanksgiving week is hereby proclaimed as Christian Heritage Week in the city of Dunbar. And I invite all citizens to join me in this observance, each in their own way. And this will be signed by the mayor. Okay. I'm not sure if we have to have a. I'll move that we accept the product motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Who seconded it? There's been a motion by Councilman Arnott to uh, proclaim. November 22nd through 28th, 2020, as Christian Heritage Week in West Virginia in the city of Dunbar. The second did by Councilman Scipio. Any further questions, 
comments or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Substantials, none. Motion carries. And so be it. Next item on the agenda is invoices for payment. Mr. Chairman, in finance committee, we reviewed our invoices totaling $70,695.36. So with that, I make a motion we pay these invoices. Service. There's been a motion by Councilman Hudson uh, to approve payment of invoices totaling $70,695.36, seconded by Councilman Scipio. Any comments, clarifications, or questions? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Next item is ordinances and resolutions. The second reading of ordinance 789. Second reading of 789. Uh, the ordinance to raise the compensation of employees of the city of Dunmore. The city council of the city of Dunmore, West Virginia, herewith after known as the city council, finds that it is in best interest to raise the compensation of its all full-time employees. With that being said, the conversation of the building inspector, public works, parks and rec directors will have an annual raise of $1,000. The conversation of our police chief will have a raise of $1,000. And then our compensation of our firefighters, uh, firefighters will get a 30 cent raise. All firefighters will get a 30 cent raise. The deputy chief will get a thousand dollars annually, and our chief will get a thousand dollars annually. Our compensation of our city police officers will all get a thirty cent raise. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio to approve the second reading of Ordinance 789, granting a 30 cent per hour pay raise to all full time city employees, police officers, and firemen, public works director, building inspector, police chief, fire chief, deputy fire chief will receive $1,000 per year pay increase. All payments to be made in full compliance with city payroll procedures effective October 4th, 2020. Seconded by Councilman Hudson. Any further comments, questions, or clarifications? <coughs> Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, mm -hmm. no. Abstention? Yes. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Miss Faulkner, will you have the roll call? Steve Arthur. Yes. Mike Scipio. Yes. Doug Fleshman. Yes. Greg Hudson. Yes. Connie Thompson. Yes. Jim Hughes. Yes. Linda Bogus. Yes. The motion does carry by roll call vote. Next item on the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance 790. Mr. Chairman, if I can refer all that, I'll recuse myself from this. Yes, sir. This is the first reading of 790. This is the ordinance to raise the compensation of the mayor of the city of Dunbar. The city council of the city of Dunbar, West Virginia, here and after known as the city council, has been presented with a proposal to raise the salary of the mayor of the city of Dunbar. There was after called the mayor. The salary of the mayor shall be increased from the effective date set forth in paragraph two, which is January 1, 2021, from 23,000 annually to 25,500 annually to be paid according to the city employments and personnel policies, as the same may be changed 
from time to time as in forty with applies with the state and federal law. Second. Yes, yep. sir. There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio to approve the first reading of Ordinance 790, increasing the compensation for the mayor by $2,500 annually, was seconded by Councilman Fleshman. Any further comments, questions, or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the first reading of Ordinance 791. Okay, I'll need to repeat this. First reading is Ordinance. First reading of Ordinance 791, an ordinance to raise the compensation of the city clerk of the city of Dunbar. The City Council of the City of Dunbar, West Virginia, here with after, known as the City Council, has been presented with a proposal to raise the salary of the City Clerk of the, of the City of Dunbar, where and after called the clerk. The salary of the clerk shall be rate increased from the effective day set forth in paragraph 2. Paragraph 2 says it takes effect January 1 of 2021. From 48 annually to 49 annually to be paid according to the city employment and personnel policies, as the same may be changed from time to time in accordance with applying state and federal law. So moved. Second. There's been a motion by Councilman Fleshman to approve the first reading of Ordinance 791 increasing the compensation for the city clerk of $1,000 annually, was seconded by uh, Councilwoman Baldus. Any further comments, questions, or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. Slide tell Okay, next item on the agenda is new business uh, donation to the Dunbar Midget League football. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we donate $1,994.26 to the Dunbar Midget League football team. For refurbish and repair of 40, throw us 50 46 instead of 40 uh, football elements. Second. There's been a motion by Councilman Hughes to donate $1,994.26 to Dunbar Midget League football team to refurbish, repair 46 helmets for the team. Seconded by Councilman Hudson. Any further comments or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. <coughs> Abstentions? None. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a trailer for Parks and Rec. Mr. Mayor, I approve. Move to approve the purchase of a new 5.5 foot by 10 foot utility trailer for Parks and Rec for Sprinkle Park at a cost not to exceed $1,400. Second. There's been a motion by Councilwoman Baldus to approve to purchase a new 5 foot five inch or five foot six inch uh, <laughs> ten foot utility trailer for the parks and recreation sprinkle park that costs not to exceed fourteen hundred dollars seconded by councilwoman thompson any comments clarifications 
Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carried. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is approval of purchase ammunition. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion and we approve the purchase of ammunition for the police department. The city of Dunbar in the amount not to exceed $3,938.76 to be paid out of the seizure account. Second. Mm -hmm. There's been a motion by Councilman Fletchman to approve the purchase of ammunition for the police department in the amount not to exceed $3,938.76 to be paid out of the seizure account. Seconded by Councilman Scipio. Any comments, clarifications? I think if you all that are watching on the live stream right now, if you go back to the finance committee meeting, uh, you'll see where these are all discussed in detail if you have any comments or questions you'll have clarification on just about every one of these items uh, any further comments or clarifications being none all those in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. all those opposed no abstentions no motion carries next item on the agenda is tree removal Here I'd make a motion to approve the removal of small elm tree that's in the power lines of 2015 Fletcher Avenue, which is a city owned lot, large elm tree at 1316 West Virginia Avenue, and grind a large stump at 1418 West Virginia Avenue. By all you need tree service at a lump sum cost of $1,500. Second. Uh, Go ahead. Correction on the uh, Fletcher Avenue address is 2105. 2115. 2115. Somebody There's been a motion by Councilman Arden to uh, to approve removal of small elm tree and power lines at 2105 Fletcher Avenue, City of Lot. And large elm tree at 1316 West Virginia Avenue and ground the large stump at 1418 West Virginia Avenue uh, by all you need tree service at a lump sum cost of $1,500. Seconded by Councilwoman Aldous. Any further comments or clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, no. Abstentions? None. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is set the date and time for trick or treat. The county has announced that they are setting trick or treat for Saturday, uh, the 31st, from 5 to 7. Uh, so it's on the table. Are we going to follow the county as we normally have or do something different? I'll make a motion we go ahead and uh, set the date of Saturday, trick or treat. October 31st. October 31st. Thank you. Same time. From 5 to 7. So it's 5 to 7. Second. I like trick or treat. <laughs> There's been a motion by Councilman Scipio uh, to follow the county's recommendation of trick or treat for Saturday, October the 31st from 5 to 7. The seconded by Councilwoman Thompson. Any further comments, clarifications? Being none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, no. Abstentions, none. Motion carries. I don't have anything on the 
on the agenda for old business. Is there anything anybody wants to bring up for old business? Being done, we'll go on with our uh, officers' reports. Uh, first, we'll go with Chief Moss, Police Department. Okay, Mayor Council. First thing, as everyone knows, our last test was October 3rd. I want to thank the Mayor and Councilman Hudson for attending that and helping us with that. Very interesting that. And to thank Buck for helping us facilitate down at the rec center that day. And to thank Scott for helping us facilitate the bingo building that day. Chief Thornhill and his guys for coming down to make sure that the runners and everyone was in medical issues that cold morning. I guess last but least is uh, Clerk Faulkner, who put a lot of work in prior to that day, he spent all day with us and kept everything above the table and running through. We had to do a couple different sites because of COVID, as everyone knows. I think it went fairly well. We had 80 applications taken out, 29 of which showed up that day, 16 got eliminated, and we now have a list of 13. Got a list of I'm sorry. Okay, 13 to pass. 13 to pass everything. So we have an active list of 13 that will start, <coughs> start the background check today. So that covers that. One of our new cruisers is in, it's in the shop, getting worked on electronics and all that. Councilman Hughes has actually seen that. I haven't seen it, but that should be out on the road just in a couple of weeks. Uh, the other one, I'm not sure where it's at, what the status is of that. That I have nothing else but take any questions. And how many are we hiring? Three. Absolutely. We'll submit three. Well, actually, we have four vacancies. Yes, sir. I would strongly recommend that we put four in there if we can. We'll do the background and get through the channels, through the commission, and through the mayor, and the process to kick in and the <coughs> governing body. Well, uh, so three to four. Yes, Thank you. Thanks to your department chief again. As you mentioned they did a great job having it all spaced out and to go within the guidelines because you know everything's different, even on something as simple as push ups. But uh, they did a great job on that, keeping everything organized and so everybody can be that's, safe while they're going. That's correct. And Lieutenant Mason and Lieutenant Schaefer, they, they basically set all that up. And again, appreciate everyone helping us fix this all good job. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Next, Chief Thornhill. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, just pick up where the police chief left off. Uh, we started accepting applications to the fire department on the 1st, and we're accepting those applications through the 23rd of October. So we'll spread that out there. And our, we have a test, preliminarily scheduled test on November 7th, that Saturday morning at 9 a.m. So we should have an eligibility list following that day uh, or the next business day. Um, and uh, we've, we, of course, we will be doing the same thing. But we're going to spread out, do the same type of thing. So a little different than what we're used to as well with due to COVID. We can't see that far out, but we're planning for that far out for COVID to still be just as uh, problematic as it is now. So, and the mayor has been very instrumental in uh, working out places we can go and test and things like that. So, we're excited, looking very forward to it. Um, I will tell you that for the month of September, your department responded to 55 incidents within the city. That is still about half of what our normal call volume would be prior to COVID-19. Um, and some of that is related to the fire department does so much more than just emergency calls. We actually, prior to COVID-19, we would go and, and do everything from help somebody out of the bathtub to whatever the citizens needed. And uh, effective today, uh, following a, a Zoom meeting we had in the afternoon with the medical director, Effective today, we will be returning to that very same call volume effective today so that the citizens can get all forms of, of help that we provide, of course, within reason. Uh, and that's not 
at all to boost our numbers. That's, that's to provide service that we were providing prior to COVID-19. And along with that, if you remember, we were shut down the last time I was here. We couldn't even run any medical-related emergency. Uh, through multiple meetings, multiple lawyers involved in different things, we did have some resolution on that a few days back. And I provided a copy of that to the mayor from Kanawha County Ambulance all the way from the governor's office um, we got some resolution on that we are back to doing that we have been for a few days actually since uh, friday we've been back to running our normal real emergency medical calls and um, and we through contracts and things there was clarification and there's actually been a filing for um, emergency changes made to that legislative law that i'm sure will be corrected going forward so we're legal we're covered we're good to go and as of today we'll be back to doing everything that everything needs to be done everything we can do uh, just to let you know we haven't been sitting idle we logged 268 hours of in-house training last month as well so we've been staying busy with, with what we can do in-house and uh, I think that's all I have but I'll take anyone's questions well you did you did have one fireman who turned in a resignation he's transferring to another department yes uh, I, have, I have one resignation tendered to me friday morning uh, without any warning whatsoever so I, i'm just as shocked as anyone is uh, his last shift is the 10th of october and uh, in keeping the council reminded we have one fireman that is actually all hurt on sick leave that uh, had an MRI on the 30th of September and that and has a scheduled appointment with a specialist um, I forget that day in my head is within the next week and a half that that we will know what his future is with the department as far as can he return or will he have to uh, look at disability options so uh, for the council's sake, one position will be open in the department. There, there's a possibility of two, um, which puts the department, of course, short staffed, even worse than normal, going into heavy vacation season like we always do. So keep us in mind. We're, we'll be running a little short. We'll plug the holes as we can uh, between uh, uh, with the deputy chief helping plug some of those holes as, as we can. So we'll do best we can. For so how many do you plan on hiring? One immediate. Uh, again, the other one, we don't know his, we don't know what the doctors are going to say on him yet, so I, I can't speak to that yet. But one resignation I have in. And how's the new gentleman still doing? The new, uh, fortunately and gracefully for us, uh, we give a six-month test that is the big, big test that determines whether we keep him or not. Mm -hmm. He has passed that exceedingly well, and he's been released to work. That happened last week as well. So that would have made things so much worse had that not happened. But he, he's excelling very well. He, he's he passed it with flying colors. So he is working as a full firefighter on shift. We're good to go with him. Good. Yeah. Thank you. We're happy about that. Okay. Chief, can you provide my office with the letter of resignation so I can hear it just now? Yes, ma'am, I can. Thank you. Yes. Hey, Chief, can. Uh, Councilman Fleshman, come back home and uh, retire and be a firefighter. If, if he thinks he can, I'd be more than happy to entertain I could probably do more than some of you young members of the staff. Way to step up, though. <laughs> I just gave her the letter. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is Mr. Burnside, <laughs> Sanitary Board. Mayor, I don't really have anything to see in the report, but I'll be glad to take any questions. Burn, I see y'all being uh, up there on the interstate, and we got this huge ditch now. Is that up to the state to, to do some of that rock out there? Are they going to leave that big ditch in there, or what's going to, what are they going to line the walls with? Well, that's a concrete ditch going through okay, there. So it's, it's just cleaned out <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's what we did. Oh, we took. Okay. Uh, I think uh, 18 truckloads of muck out of there. So, uh, what do you see it now, man? 
We, we cleaned that out for them. So that was one of the stipulations uh, that we had to agree to to allow us to go over there to put our line. Wow. We did way more than what we really wanted to do. We put the fence back up. We got gates in the city garage. We put gates in so that they can go in and cut the grass around there. They wanted it secure. So we fixed all that back and it's, it's, we're done, I hope. <laughs> I didn't really know that this was that big until I was like, wow, I think your mom was. Well, yeah, it's, it's a big concrete yeah. ditch. Through. The highway department's not done anything with that ditch since 1973. That's right. It's 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 and it's, it is plugged up like that all the way down to the fire, the culvert that goes underneath the fire department. So probably within the next big rain, there'll be just as much muck back oh, in there. Yeah. It's, um, coming it's going to come, come our way. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just going to, it's going to settle out right back in, back well, in the ditch like there because saying. there's no place for it to go. I mean, all, all you've done is created a clean spot between two dirty spots. <laughs> now, where it actually goes underneath the bridge here, there's only like that much space left. Yeah. And that thing is what, five, six feet deep? Yeah. Wow. So, we did our part more than sufficient. Yeah. Anything else from Mr. Burnside? Thank you, Bernie. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Leishman had a procedure today so you'll uh, you're welcome to harass him tomorrow when he comes back in i would like to back up make one comment for mr burnside uh, we have a sewer problem at our first baptist church and as soon as i notified the sanitary board matt and bernie both they got right on it. They were down there today, dug out and cleaned out their side of it, had to put a new line in, but we did find out that the clog is not on them, but the line was already broken here right too. So they took care of all that problem and we're going to finish our part up to our other station. But I want to thank them for being there so fast and doing their job and they're in good to go. And we've got a contractor coming in to do our end. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yes, sir. I'll pass it on. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Council citizens. All right, since the last time we had council meeting, we had uh, our wine cellar class of race. I just want to give y'all a little bit of numbers on this. Um, we had 130 registered runners. We had 104 actually ran. We had the youngest was eight years old, the oldest was 76. <clears throat> well, every, everything was done, the donations and the runners and everything like that, we made $1,900. Yeah. Um, also, over the weekend, we had a citywide yard sale. Yes, we only had like four on the list this year. That could be due to COVID 19. Not too many people doing it. Um, Went last week down to the pump house at Shawnee Pool. We got it winterized, ready for the season, got the water level down. We already went and uh, unhooked all the lines over into the bathrooms over in the shelter area. I went today and got all the RV antifreeze. We got to put in those so the guys will do that. Uh, I also got another beach and YT to do the two ones we have at our parks because they have to do those because of the back of the uh, only other thing I got, Christmas break still coming up on December 4th. Connie Ando and I are working on that, trying to make it uh, simpler with the uh, judging uh, and not as many categories. I'm going to go a little further, but not as many categories. So we are working on that now, trying to get everything finalized so we can start sending stuff out and start getting people in that want to participate in. Other than I don't have anything else. Explain about all the schools that showed up for the race. Yes. Well, we had two main high schools that actually uh, contacted me since the cross country team. Cross country meets were 
Fancy. We had like 30, over, I was going to say over 30 from uh, Hurricane High School and 12 or 13 from Winfield High School. They came and participated. Then we had other schools like uh, Scott High School, Valley, uh, Ruth Lawn Elementary, a couple other elementary schools that showed up to run the race. They were that very pleased. I called the um, cross country coach at uh, Hurricane. He said the kids loved it. it was great course they, they were all overwhelmed now this year um, we did have a whole lot more 5ks than 10ks if you go out and look at it you'll see them 10 kers they're, they've been running for 40 plus years they're dedicated to that but the 5k has really picked up From last year maybe you think we had like 10 or 12 to 7. <coughs> Okay, now what are you going to do with the schools? I'm going to say I'm a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already working on that. Trophies for the, uh, the two schools, like a first and second place trophies. I'm working on that now also, trying to make those up online. And I've been emailing him everything that I do, so make sure I get his approval. <laughs> Actually, uh, what Bubba and I talked about, he's going to combine all the run times for the teams, the two track teams that competed and divided by the number of players and have an aggregate team run score at which ever one of the two teams scored the lowest or best time would be first place and the other one would be get a second place trophy. And I already figured that out and I did it on spreadsheet or something new I learned this year on how to do it. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Mr. Jones? No, sir. Um, we did get notice today, and I think the chief has confirmed it, that the kids' night out tomorrow night has been canceled. Is that correct, Chief? That's what I was told from neighborhood watch. So, uh, I guess we'll get everybody notified when that gets rescheduled. I think they made some statement that we're in we're in the gold zone, so there were some restrictions with the health department on what we could and couldn't do. So uh, they're still working on it. They're they're committed to get something done for the kids. Yeah, you know, at some they, point. In time. They were having meetings tonight to discuss what to do. Yeah. But we'll keep everybody posted on that. Okay. They need to get some notifications out so what the schools and put on the sign. It's maybe. already on there. Okay, you already got to take care of it. All right, Mr. Elliott. Mayor Council, not a lot to report other than we tore down the Lions Club shelter this afternoon. It's about halfway ready to go out. Uh, two trucks are loaded. I'll have the third truck up there in the morning getting it done. The rest of the holes all over this end of town, uh, first ward that were missed. Will be if the weather cooperates. Of course, we've been off because it's been so cold. We don't want to bring the black top in here in chunks. So that'll start from tomorrow afternoon as soon as we get done with the uh, Lions Club shelter, and then eventually we will hopefully get the chance to work in some of these alleys that are gravel to get the gravel back. With that being said, that's all I have to sign. Is there any way that we can get a couple loads of gravel up into a wine cellar and that one will dip up there? Mm -hmm. I talked to Scott about that about a week or so ago. He just waiting when we get a truck that we can get up there and get it done. Right there when you need to start up to the <coughs> main um, thing that will dip right there. All, the, all, the way up, that hole. all the way up through there trying to get some spots filled in. The caretaker said that you know if we get it up there that he would go and fill in the spots. Do we have salt? We do. Uh, I, I called the company to ask them about getting more. I haven't heard back from them. Also, an update on your tractor that I sent to Fairplane. The uh, hydraulics on the boom is fixed. Now they're working on the steering. So if you didn't know how long it was going to take, but that's in the process. Um, that's all I know at this point in time. I have another question. Um, right there 
this may be really helpful for them. Right there where Taco Bell is and the car wash, there's still lots of water there on that road. And it's going to get cold, it's going to freeze, then they're going to waste money on salt. Uh, can, we, can somebody call somebody and encourage them? To How much of that's coming from the car wash? None. It, there's a leak there. I have called them. I know. I know. I'm, 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 and, I'm just uh, concerned that there will be an accident there. It's just, to them, it's not as important as some other work. Right. It's not as high. I won't say not as important. It's not as high on the priority list as what some other things are. I but that, I will call again tomorrow. I have been assured that they will get taken care of. Just my concern is that as it gets colder, it's going to be an ice rink. Right, they told them hold it a week, and then further down by Taco Bell, now there's something else sleeping there. It's not the car wash. And there's a zero going into Franklin. Huh? Okay, I'm just concerned. Thank you. Yeah, Chief, I was just going to say about the gravel. When you're pulling the parking, two first parking spaces, one at Teller Park. Uh, gravel and some free grind right there. So we got a couple years there for this golf course. We're not going to use that. He's already used that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's already used that. Why didn't you stop me when I started? <laughs> 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 you like to hear you talk. Yeah. 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 All right. Anything else for the department heads? So we'll start with Linda tonight. Um, okay. Nothing. I'm good. As long as we get the water on the ice. So. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe that I'm a happy camper tonight. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that is nothing to sleep me. I think just want to thank the Women's Club for hosting our virtual meet the candidates that most everyone is involved in. Just a reminder with that, it'll be virtual again, but on the 13th, of, which is a week from tomorrow, 13th of October at 6 p.m., there'll be a virtual debate for the mayoral candidates in the same same format, virtual uh, of our Women's Club Facebook page live stream. Does the virtual debate mean that we're going to have emojis debate, debating? Well, if you watched a little bit of the virtual meet the candidates, that may be possible. <laughs> and yeah, we better stop there, right, Scott? Are they going to turn that light on and off? <laughs> <laughs> One thing, uh, Linda, your last quarter of finances for the candidates is due by the 7th of October. And there's some forms for laying right there if anybody needs any. Thank you. I've had two citizens ask me. If and when that the public will ever get to attend council meetings again, has the public, has the health department mentioned anything about when this may? We don't have enough. I mean, we barely have enough space to be in compliance with with who's here. So until until that orange, red, green. Uh, the, gold, the color code. color code gets to a green mode. They may or may not say that you can have an indoor meeting with more than so many people per, okay. per square was, foot. So they ask. I, I think told them it was completely up to the General Charleston Health Department in the state of West Virginia. Yeah. And they suggested us using the bingo building. And I said, well, that's not our ability to use unless. We're invited down there, and the proper people say it's okay. Well, I don't know that the council meeting in a building that size would be considered. They made so so many exceptions for bingo and <laughs> casinos yeah. and stuff, and and hopefully we're not a we're not a casino with the citizens' money. <laughs> I just so I don't know. I mean, it just. You just call bingo, you can crack in and call from each other, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, passed that on because I was asked that by a couple of but, Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're getting as tired of it as we are. Mm -hmm. yep. That's all, sir. The other thing I had is I, I really think we need to keep pushing to get to salt prices. 
we don't need to get caught up in that. But at the same time, I like to just get a price on a new truck and spread her for this stuff. Because if I'm not mistaken, you kind of need one down there. Don't you? So I'd like to see us put both of those together before winter gets here. Don't we going to get a spreader? Another one? Seem like. Well, are we going to get another spreader for one of the trucks? You guys are supposed to be getting me the prices still. With COVID, it's hard to get yeah, into them. The, the three quarter ton pickup truck is rated to put a spreader in, and it's already got the plating on it. So that's what we're waiting on is the uh, to get a stainless steel quote for a stainless steel spreader to go in the back of that one. Now, you know, we could we could still use uh, probably another truck, uh, medium size dump truck with a spreader in it. The I seen we, today on the municipal league, uh, I think it's a town of man it's still on there who had a spreader that only been used twice or something. So I'll pass that info to you. It might not be. Yeah, we need it. It may not be the right size. We need a bigger one for downtown. But if you have two small ones for the hills, good shape, yes. we'll have a big one from downtown. Yep, I mean, this one says I only have, truck. both of my big trucks are two wheel drive and stuff, four wheel drive, so they can't do the hills. Oh. Thornhill's got a truck and chassis. Oh, yeah. But it's not really a true one ton. I mean, it is basically a one ton, but it's got a single tire, so it's not a dually tire. So the most you're going to be able to put on it, you're not going to be able to really haul anything of any. That's the reason they're stuck with them right now, is um, they're they're just somebody has a specific use for it that that would be fine. But for what we want, we want to we want to load it up a little bit heavier than what a single tire would would do for us. So I will get with them and try to get some numbers on that. I'm good, Mayor. Where's the American car? Last two, close to the last two weeks of October, early voting. Well, I guess uh, it's October 21st to 31st. I think it's rough things. It's a 10 day window. Yeah. <clears throat> Is, it, is there anything else to come before council? Yes, sir. I have one question for Mr. Hughes. Uh, next neighborhood watch meeting. When y'all will have? What is it, sir? Next neighborhood watch. Next neighborhood watch. I. That's right. This I guess they're having Thursday night. Okay. Make sure it's there. Okay. They were getting together at the nine, so I'm sure they're going to have neighborhood watch on Thursday night. This is always the second uh, Thursday we've ever run. At the rec center. Yep. All in my Joel Monitor at six o'clock. Yep. Anything else? Anything from you? I'm excited. <laughs> we're doing we're we're doing well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, for the good of the order, if there's no other city business, I move that we adjourn this meeting. Second. Meeting adjourned. Yeah.